Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Cindy Klosser and my business is Victorian Kettle and I own a Victorian Tea Catering Company and I'm excited because today I am shooting my um, very first YouTube video and I thought what a great way um, to showcase what I do in my business. Um, I'm going to have baking videos, um, even like tablescapes and de decorations for the table and all kinds of um, great topics. Um, so stay tuned for all the videos. Um, so today I have a really unique uh, uh, thing that I'm going to show you today and I want to thank my fiance Chris Sale for this idea because I've, I've never heard of it myself. Um, but today I'm going to show you um, how to fry Queen Anne's lace. And Queen Anne's Lace is a plant. Um, it blooms in North America. You might have seen it on the sides of the roads or maybe even in your, um, uh, where you live in your neighborhood. Um, it blooms in July and August and it looks like um, a little lace doily. Um, it's very pretty. And uh, I just wanna say how you identify this plant because there is a plant that is poisonous that looks very similar to the Queen Anne's Lace. And how you identify it is there's a little black, um, looks purplish black or red, dark red, little dot in the middle, um, if you can see that, little dark red dot. And um, the stems are going to be hairy and have a very close green um, stems, very close up under the plant. Um, but if you don't know how to identify plants, please ask somebody or get a professional opinion before you eat um, any type of plant. But so today, so you're going to cut, uh, get some Queen Anne's lace and what you want to do is rinse it off, rinse a few off. So get a paper towel and just rinse it off just to get any little bugs or dust or anything on it. And then you want to make sure that after you rinse them, um, I'm just going to do a few for time's sake, but when you rinse them, you want to make sure that you um, dry them completely, that they're dried and there's no water uh, because you're going to fry it and you don't want the oil splattering on top of you. So then what you're going to do is you want to make sure that you cut the stems off as close as you can to the flower um, So because the, the stem is bitter. So you're going to want to cut those stems off. And then once you have your uh, plants rinsed and the stems cut off, what you're going to do is you're going to take um, some canola oil um, in a pan. I have uh, already fried it for time's sake, uh, but you're going to get a pan and I'll fill about maybe half a cup of uh, canola oil. And then what you're going to do is um, uh, next is make sure you uh, dip uh, the flour. So, you're going to need a couple eggs, depending on how many you make. I had used two eggs today and we made about a dozen. So you're going to um, uh, crack your eggs and, you know, whip up the eggs in a bowl. And then you're going to have a flour and I used about a cup and um, about a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon of pepper for taste. And then put that in the flour and mix that up. So then what you would do is take your... Um, your flour and you're going to dip it in the egg mixture and then you're going to dip it in the flour mixture and make sure it's all nice and coated. Okay, So it's going to look like this and then um, you're going to coat all those flours and then once you get that done you're going to fry them up in the frying pan, get your oil hot and you're going to fry it for about two to three minutes um, on each side. And I already have some done here so you can see. And it's you want to make sure it's really golden, golden uh, brown on each side. So two to three minutes on each side. Um, and then you're going to uh, take that out. Make sure you put it on some paper. It will um, sop up some of the oil. So a couple ways you can eat it is, and I have some done here. You just move some of this out of the way so you can see um, is my fiance likes things more savory he likes a lot of pepper and and cheese so you can sprinkle some fresh grated parmesan on top okay if you like things a little bit more savory and of course I have a sweet tooth 
So I like my sweets. So anything, any excuse to let me eat some jam. <laughs> um, I have this wonderful cherry amaretto jam that I have been loving with my scones. And, or you could try a little bit of, um, of jam with, um, with the, um, I'm going to get a little small one here. Maybe try a little bit of jam on the Queen Anne's lace. Oh, that looks delicious. So those are just a couple ways um, you can eat it. You can also probably sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar, sift a little powdered sugar on there with some jam. Um, so that's just a little bit about that. And um, just to tell you, I forgot too, um, just a little bit about the flower, um, how it got its name, Queen Anne's Lace. I did forget to mention that. Queen Anne of, um, of England, uh, Great Britain and the Scots and Ireland back in 1707 uh, to 1714, I believe. Um, she was the story goes that she was tatting lace, um, and she pricked her finger on a needle, and hence the little drop of blood um, on the lace. And so that little black red spot is the the drop of blood because it looks like a little piece of lace. So hence that's how. The flower got its name. Um, so if you've enjoyed uh, what you've seen here today, I have so many more baking videos to come, uh, so many ideas that I want to share with you. Um, please check out my Facebook um, business page, Victorian Kettle. I'm going to be posting all my recipes on there. Um, everything that I make on here, I will be posting on there. And then I also have a webpage, www.victoriankettle.com is my um, also my business um, webpage if you want to uh, reserve a Victorian tea party. Um, please check out my sites and um, I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.